Hey crafty family, it's me again, and today we are going to make something so fun. If you watched my last video where I showed you my Valentine's Day swap and the, um, the gorgeous crocheted poodle that I got from Cheryl, which, ugh, I'm still just... Oh, I'm still just having, I'm just verklempt, you know what I'm saying? Love it. Um, in her bag that she made me, which again, ugh, that bag, seriously, seriously, that bag, that bag with the little skulls on it, oh god, and it had goodies in it, there was these amazing tiles that she made, and so I picked her brain, and she sent me to the video of where she learned how to do it um and i the the tutorial that was given was kind of like eh, it was hard, not great to follow it was it was okay but it was not my style of you know trying to learn something i need it like how i do it is how i like to learn where it's slowed down and in the full video no matter how long it is is there so that you know everybody understands what's going on for the most part um that's how i like to learn so that's how i teach you know what i mean that's how i like to show you guys is slowed down you know i don't speed up my videos um i uh, the only time i speed them up is if i'm doing something repetitive that i've done and already showed you how to do or if i'm heat drying and i'll speed up through that stuff or whatever but i don't speed up through the main process of a video um, but here are her tiles. They are gorgeous. I love this. Some people might not like this because, you know, some people like perfect, um, embellishments that are from the store that are perfectly flat and perfectly colored and perfectly sized. And, you know, and me, I like this. I like this type of embellishment. This to me is the best. Um, they're tiles that look like glass, but they're not. They're plastic. They're amazing. Like, look at this one. It's flipping amazing. Oh, God. So amazing. I hope you could see that because I do have myself zoomed in, but I'm going to try to stay on camera the best I can. Um, I love this one. It's got black with a couple blue specks in it. Like, they they're just gorgeous. Hers are more gorgeous than mine because I'm still kind of learning. But now that I've done it two times um, or two sets of them, um, I kind of... I think I've got a better grasp on how to do it enough to teach you guys how to do it. My favorites are these with the bubbles in them. And if you turn them on, if you look from the side, I hope you could see this. They are like raised bubbles. And if you push the bubbles, they actually, because they're so thin, they actually indent. And I just find them fascinating. And I just like pushing on them. And this one will do it too. I, I just don't know why I love the bubbles. I wish mine came out with bubbles. But I think one of them came out with a small bubble like that. They have bubbles all within them. Some of them, some of hers don't have bubbles. I like them too. Like some of them came out nice and clear. I have not gotten any of those in mine. Uh, all of mine have little bubbles. And I think the trick to it is is not having it in the oven as long as the lady that did the original video says to put it in the oven. She says to put it in the oven at, you know, on the highest setting, like the broil setting, like whatever your oven goes to, for 10 minutes. I found that 10 minutes was too long. You didn't need 10 minutes. 10 minutes will give you, you know, more bubbling, which I like the bubbling, so I like, the, I like both. You know, I like, like, this one has a ton of little tiny bubbles all in it. It gives that cool effect. I like that. But I also like the no bubble effect, like this. So it's kind of a give and take. I like both. So I, you know, I hope to still have both kinds, because I really think both of them are very unique. Um, so these are hers, like I said, that she sent me. Okay, love these. So I'm going to throw these back in here. Let's see if I can do this amazingly I was able to get them all in there without making a mess here are the ones that I made okay now the littler ones right here on the left here these are the ones that I made the first time around and they're kind of misshapen a little bit they um, they all have a lot of bubbles but they're still I still think they're gorgeous I mean I love them I love the colors I loved I just think they're awesome and then here's the second set that I did 
where I got a little better at it. I was able to, you know, nail down how to shape it properly. And like I, if I didn't mention this already, these are made from CDs, like compact disc, like music CDs. You can use this kind or you can use like, you know, this kind, like any old CDs that you have laying around that you don't need, that's what you use. Okay, and what's cool about it is some of them will have like, all right, let me see if I can find it. Here it is. This one was cut from like near the center and there was like this metallic silver line and I thought, well, I'll leave that there. I want to see what it'll do and I love it. I absolutely love it because it gives this weird stripe. So I don't know. I don't think this one. See, I don't remember what that CD looked like either. See, like this one doesn't have it. And this one, I guess it would be that very center section, kind of. But this one's like a, a weird color. The other one was better, I think. It was more silver, which is why I got this line. I got a little bit of text there, but I don't care. I just love these. These are going to be fun to embellish a junk journal. I want to do an entire cover of a journal um, with these tiles mosaiced on, on it. So now that I've got these, I've got some smaller ones and I'm going to make some more. We're going to make some together and I'm going to hopefully have enough to do a small journal, have these completely mosaiced and possibly use actual grout to grout them in or something like that, like a clear silicone to grout them in on the journal itself. And since they're lightweight, the heaviest thing about it will be the grout that I put on. I mean, so it's not going to be heavy. And I've wanted for the, like, probably for the past six or seven years, I've wanted to make a mosaic tiled journal cover. But I shied away from it because I didn't think that the heavy glass, or if I use ceramic tile pieces, I thought it would be too heavy. And I thought it would be awkward. And I, I thought it would be hard to work with it. But this just made me like so happy because this I can work with and these are lightweight and they're not going to make the journal ridiculously heavy at all. And I just, oh my God, I just love them. I don't know if you love them. Am I the only crazy person that thinks these are the most fantastically fascinating things? I mean, I got this, I got this, these from her yesterday, like, like I opened them last night in the evening. And by today, I'm already, I mean, within, literally, within an hour of getting these, I jumped up and got this stuff and started making them. I mean, that's how crazy I was for it. Look at that one. I just love the colors. I'm so fascinated. I could sit here and look at these forever. Because the colors in them, I mean, all I did was use acrylic paint. And I'll show you how to do it because, oh my God. All right, but before I start... I need to show you something because I kept forgetting in the last two videos to show this. Um, Craftex, the company Craftex, sent me this. They sent me this. Um, I know I'm zoomed in, so you probably can't see it. But it's a large roll of their Craftex paper. And I haven't even opened yet, it yet because I wanted to open it here with you. It's Craftex paper fabric. And it's a 19 by 1.5 yard roll. And it's fantastic. And I have the perfect thing that I want to use this on. Because I want to make a journal with it. Because, uh, yeah, I want to make an art journal and use this paper as art journal paper. Because I'm opening it now for the first time and actually feeling it for the first time. They asked me to review it. Um, and it even gives you instructions how to make stuff with it. How to make a mini tablet case. You can make a tablet case. Because it's like... It feels like a canvas. It really does. And it's just fantastic. I mean... It feels like a really stiff fabric or a canvas, it feels almost like. This is awesome. I'm like... And, give, and I have so much of it. I am so excited to play with this. You have no idea. So I'm not going to do it, obviously, in this journal, in this journal, in this video. But there will be a video where I use this odd material. Hold on. 
where I use this odd material to make a journal and then and then do artwork on on the journal obviously to see how it well it holds up to different medias and stuff but wow I really love this stuff so if you're interested in getting some of this um, again I'm not prepared you can probably go to their website um, which is www I'll put it on the screen CT C as in cat, T as in Tom, pub, P U B dot com. So, yeah, you definitely need to check this out. This stuff is made in Germany. It's designed in the USA, made in Germany. Durable and rugged texture. This, this stuff is just fascinating to me. I'm sure there are people out there that have used this. You might have used it. I don't know. But I haven't. And this is going to be my first time. And I'm so happy that they asked me to do this. Um, or or get, sent this to me to do this. Because I am just... I can't wait. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. So that is that right now. I'm going to throw this behind me so that we can move on. Okay, so what you're going to need for this project. A number one, a really good pair of scissors. If you, and if you have arthritis in your hands, you may want to ask somebody else to do the cutting for you because the cutting is a bit, and I have arthritis in my hands, so trust me. But luckily, regardless of arthritis, I have extremely strong hands. They're not as strong as they used to be because of the arthritis, but they're still fairly strong. I I had to stop. I was going to make the video right after I made this batch that I made, but I couldn't because my hands were really sore. So if you have our if you don't have arthritis, this isn't going to bother you that much. So really good scissors. Tim Holtz scissors is what I'm using. A CD. Now I found that we're going to be taking the coating off of the CD. This you know, here, I found that these kind of CDs, the rewritable kind that you buy in packs of like 25 and 50 are the easiest to get the coating off of. The ones where the coating was like, I don't know whether they heat press it on, was a little bit more difficult. It was still doable. It was just a little more difficult. Um, this was a lot easier to have one of these. Okay. You're going to need duct tape. Duct tape worked the best. I don't care what color it is. It doesn't matter. Okay, so duct tape, and then you're going to need a razor blade of some sort, uh, you know, a, what do you call these things? Yep, one of these things, you know, razor blade. Uh, I, I seriously can't speak. Um, a piece of graph paper might help you, and you'll need like a Sharpie pen and a ruler. So those are basically what you're going to need, at, and some acrylic paints and a paintbrush, but we'll get to that. I don't like to push ahead too quickly. I'm trying to find a pen that might work. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Okay. First thing you're going to do is just make a light. Don't dig into the CD. Just make a light score mark across the CD so that it kind of digs a little bit into the top layer there. I don't know if you could see that right there. And that'll help start the process. You're going to cut off a piece of tape, you know, whatever length you want. You're going to lay it on the CD and press. Kind of like putting on, oh crap, kind of like waxing is the basic process. You're going to put it on and start peeling off. Now, I have discovered that is really cool. Okay, and on these type of CDs, that's how it comes off. So if you save this for later, you can die cut something out of that or punch something out of that. And it's just really badass. So something to keep in mind if you wanted to save that. You can do several pieces like that and try to fill this up, which is what I'm trying to do. Because I just find that to be fascinating. So you're not really wasting anything <laughs> by doing this. You're actually, see, like I can just die cut something out of that. And once you've used it up, usually you need about two or three pieces of, of duct tape. See, 
And there's another piece. Like, it's just cool, isn't it? It's cool. So you're going to do this and you're going to clean off the whole top of this. Isn't that amazing what happens to a CD when you peel it off? It's completely clear. And, and the CD will still play. You could take this off and just have a clear CD if you had, like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I just find that funny. Um, but the next step might ruin the actual playing of the CD. <laughs> the next couple of steps are going to ruin that because it's not going to stay in this form. But if you left it just like this, you could still put it in your CD player and play it. I think I don't yeah because it's not messing with the bottom it's just taking the you know film off the top of it so if you don't get all of it off don't worry about it because like I said I think if you leave actually leave some of it on that's how you're gonna you can get some of that silver too so that's an idea you can go through and leave some of little bits and pieces like if you did it I might do that at some point like playing around to see how it looks if I go through and like just take duct tape and stripes and then leave other parts on I don't know we might play with that at some point when I need to make more but I'm not gonna worry about that today just going to do the basic how I did it okay and then once you've got it 90% clean um, I'm going to save my pieces of duct tape over here somewhere because I'm going to at least punch something out of it. Okay, now that you've got this on here, now sometimes there's, an, you know, the coating on the other side and you can feel the difference between the sides. Like this is the smooth side where we just pulled all that stuff off of. And this side here, I don't know, maybe that, this was the side we pulled stuff off of. Yeah. This was the side we pull stuff off of. And underneath it here, it has some other film on it. And I, just, I don't know if it helps to do this, but I know it cleans it really well. So it's kind of a good idea. Just take some alcohol on a rag and wipe the entire CD back in front just to clean it and get it nice and clean. And that'll get any remaining film off there. I mean, some of that, that other stuff will still be on there. You could scrape that off if you really want to, but I'm just going to leave it. It's really not going to make a difference. I'm just trying to get any oils off of it so that the paint will stick really good. And we'll get good adhesion in the paint because that's what we're going to need. Okay, so now we're done with that. Now the graph paper comes into place. So you're going to take a piece of graph paper. Don't mind mine because I got paint all over it, but who cares? It's still going to do its job. I took a piece of graph paper and this is where you're going to decide how big you want your tiles. The first time I did it, see how small mine are? I kind of winged it and just like drew some lines with a sharpie and a ruler and made a, you know, like a checker pattern, like a crisscrossy checker pattern like directly onto the CD and it was a little wonky, which is why some of my tiles are wonky. Okay. I was just playing around. I wanted to see how the technique worked. I wasn't worrying about being precise. And then the second time I decided to take the graph paper and you, because it's got the little squares on it, you can, you know, take a ruler and decide, do I want my tiles to be three squares worth and they're not ever going to be exact. You know, do you want them to be like three or nine squares? I mean, three, 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 you know, they're three, like, you know what I mean? Like a tic-tac-toe board, or you can make them bigger. You could just, you just kind of use this as your guide. And there's a reason to do this and, I, and, I, and you'll see in a second, but make yourself a little grid, um, use a Sharpie and draw out your grid, use a ruler. So everything stays as straight as possible. Okay, and once you have your grid, I know mine's a mess. Don't go by mine. Mine's a disaster. I didn't really care. I, I could still see mine. Then you're going to take your, hold on. Take your CD. You're going, whatever side you want, doesn't matter. You're going to lay it there, okay? And this is where you're going to draw your lines. So you kind of want to adjust it so you get the most for your money, basically. 
Um, and I like this because it pretty much will fit if you do the three, um, the nine, squ nine small squares to make up a square, um, it'll pretty much fit where you can get, you know, the most for your money. And I try to move it over so that I can get, like, you know what I mean, the most out of my CD. And I'll have some that are not shaped exactly right. And now here's the thing, um, uh, what was I thinking about? Oh yeah, this is the thing that I'm going to say to do is, no, we're not gonna use that. We're going to use washi tape or painter's tape, which I have some painter's tape here. And we're just gonna take a teeny tiny little piece of wash, uh, painter's tape and we're going to stick just one piece. It's just to help keep everything um, positioned. Like that. And, you know, so one piece of washi tape this way, it's not falling off, and you're good to go. Washi tape or painter's tape, because then it'll come off clean and you won't hurt your grid because you're going to be able to use that over and over. Then you're going to take a ruler, you're going to take a Sharpie. And you are going to follow the lines of your grid. And that's why just a small piece of painter's tape, it's not going to affect it because you're going to have a ruler and you're just going to follow your ruler, which is going to go over the painter's tape. So just start wherever you want. Because if you don't put the painter's tape there, you're going to have a bitch of a time because it's going to slide all over and you have to keep realigning it. And this made it go so much faster. Okay, so you're going to go all the way across one way. And it, you don't have to be so perfect because otherwise you're just going to waste your time because they'll never come out 100% perfectly square. And that's the point. They're not supposed to. They're supposed to look like organic, you know, funky tiles that have been like sitting around. Like they're supposed to look like tiles that were, you know, sitting and being worn away in the sea. And that's why the edges are like softened and worn away. Like they just look cool to me. They just... I don't know. You know what I mean? These are just awesome. I know some of you are probably thinking, oh my God, they're so stupid, but I don't know. I think they're wicked cool. They're some, one of the best embellishments I've seen in a long time. And actually I have another embellishment that I'm going to show you in the coming days that you're going to die over. Oh my God, you're going to die. Okay. So then we're going to turn it just like I did and go back the other way, make your checker obviously and yeah your hands are gonna wear it away a little bit because even though it's a sharpie uh, they say permanent but you know and when you're holding it and cutting it of course it's gonna wear away but you'll still be able to see the basics of where you got to cut I think a Sharpie will work better than this one. This Infinity Permanent Marker is not as good as a Sharpie, even though it's a permanent marker. So, okay, line it up. Make your little lines. Doesn't take very long. You know, I hate to measure, so this is why the grid system is a good idea. Okay, now. Now you can easily take this off your paper and your thing, and you can even save this little piece and use it again. If you're that, you know, frugal. And I can be sometimes, but I'm not going to worry about a piece of painter's tape. Okay, so now, I mean, you're going to try to be careful when you hold it, but it's going to be hard because you don't want to rub it off too much. But now is where you're going to cut, and this is where it's going to kind of hurt. So I found that if you hold it with your finger in the center, at least while you're, if you keep the center intact as much as you can initially, um, you can do that and you won't rub off all your thing going to get a good grip and you're going to cut as straight as you can. And I found that if you push the scissors, okay, see where the, my hand is? If you put it along a table and you push, it makes it a lot easier, okay? But yes, this is painful a little bit, especially if you got hand issues. Now, don't throw that away. And they will, like, especially when you start cutting the little pieces, they start to fly all over the place. The longer strips don't as much, but my hands are sore from before, 
So like my finger right here, because that gets the most pressure under here. Man, is that sore. It started cutting and I'm like, oh crap, that feeling is just there. So I might actually put my hand on the outside and try that because my pointer finger is so sore from cutting. And amazingly enough, what's funny is these ones, these CDs, the ones, like I said, that are the kind that you get in a pack, the blank CDs, that's what I'll call them because that's what they are. The blank CDs cut easier too. The, this kind, I was having issues with it kind of cracking, especially in the center, but these cut really clean. I don't understand the difference, you know, I don't know, but these are the best. These work the best. So if you don't have any, you can buy these so cheap nowadays that it's worth it to get these embellishments, in my opinion. Or if you have a creative reuse um, store in your area, sometimes you might want to turn it around and finish cutting from the other side. It might make it easier. Um, anyway, if you have a creative reuse store in your area, they usually have tons of these CDs. And so now, because I'm that way, I'm going to start on this side. Um, so you can get a bunch of these used CDs. You can ask your friends if they have any like old burn CDs that they put music on from years ago that they don't want or whatever, or even brand new ones that you just know you're not going to use anymore because really most people put things on USB drives anymore and um, what have you. and external hard drives and stuff. All right, I gotta get a grip on this. It's a little hard, but once you get, you know, especially if you have, you know, a, a son or somebody, like men generally have stronger hands than women. So it might be better to um, ask a son, teenage son or husband, father, whoever to do this for you if you have like me, like arthritis or just hard hands to, but if I can do it because of my, I mean, if I can do it, you could do it. It's just not going to feel great. <laughs> it's just going to take, and that's why I can only do one at a time. And then I got to, I can't do another one for a few hours because it's painful. Now's where they, as they get smaller, they start to fly across the room. All right, and when you get to the center, you don't have to use the center one, obviously, or you can use it just like this. Well, no, because you need a second piece. Hold on to it, and then when you have another one and you do another CD, use this center piece and make one with a hole in the center because you need two to make one. Okay, so now you're just gonna cut the rest of these into their squares. See how they start flying? Ugh, I had them all over the place. The best way to do it, I'm doing it to stay on camera, is to do it in your lap, put a cloth or a towel in your lap and point it down towards that and it'll catch it into the cloth. All right, that little piece I don't need. I just threw it on the floor by accident. Now here, I'm not going to bother with that piece or that piece, so I'm just going to cut it off and be done with it. But I am going to use, even though this has got a slight curve, I am going to use these two pieces. Because what I'm going to do is I'll take them and because they match, I can do that. And so, and then I can cut straighten that out. So it's going to be smaller than the other ones, but I can cut off that curved part or I could have left it the way I had it where it was kind of matched that way and just make it unique, but cut off the curved part. And then you've got two more rectangular ones, but Hey, I've got plenty of rectangular ones that work just as good. So, you know, there's one right there. Hold on. We are back, definitely back. And what I did was when I shut off the camera to restart it because of my alarm going off, um, I just finished cutting up the squares. So I'm gonna pick away at the garbage and that's these little 
triangular weird looking shapes because we only want goodly shaped ones. I'm going to get rid of this so I don't get paint on it like I did last time. Chuck those in the trash. Um, and make sure that there are um, any of them that I want, like this one is kind of wonky. I'm going to cut it as square as I can get it. And come on now. Same with like this one. And there's two. Because what you want to do is you want to match up pieces so that they'll work together. Because you got it, you're gonna put two together. Um, I might not have a match for that, and that's okay. I could throw that one out. Or I can cut this one down. Actually, I'll cut it down to match this one. And you could put them together and then kind of match them as best as you can. And if one of them isn't perfect, like, you notice how this one, I don't know if you could see it, but this one's sticking out. It's fine. It'll When it melts, it'll it'll be okay. So I won't worry about this one then. Okay, so now go through and make pairs. And don't worry about the black Sharpie on there. That's going to go away. And you're going to make pairs of two similar sizes and just put them together. Over to the side. They don't have to be perfect. They're not going to be perfect, but just similar sizes. Just two, just, just match them up. You know what I mean. You know what I'm getting at. Just gonna play match game for a minute because it's easier to get this out of the way before you start painting. This way, the hard part's over. Okay, so now that you've got your pairs, and if you have one that doesn't have a pair, then, you know, just set it aside and save it for the next time that you do this. Now what you're going to want to do is paint your tiles, which is the fun part. I am going to take several different colors, and metallics, I think, are the best, but I like to do a little of everything. So I'm going to put just small amounts. I'm hoping, I don't know if you could see this. Um, well, let me do this a little bit because you don't need to see to the, the right of me. There we go. This way you can see the paints, see what paints I'm picking up. Um, I have all paints back here. Um, you're not gonna be able to see that, but just take random paints. Okay, that's enough, because I only have this many tiles, and I've got 7,000 paints, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so you're going to, I have a rag to kind of dry off my brush in between colors. I also have water to really clean it off if I have two contrasting colors that are going to look muddy. Basically, you're just going to, you're not going to be like painting for, you know, to make it look like artwork. You're just going to be slapping color on there and I usually just dry it off on the thing and then I'm going to grab another color and I'm going to put them together like that and then I might fancy it up a little bit by adding crap by dropping my brush and adding like little bits of like that and then you're going to take the other tile when you're done painting it while it's still wet and you're just going to put it on top just like that and set it aside to dry just like that. And you're gonna move on to the next one. Now, if you have a if you have a color on your brush, be careful not to pick up a color that's gonna be too contrasting. I'm just gonna stick to that color that I had on there. Ooh, that's a pretty color. That is pretty. And you want to you don't want it to be too thin. You want it to be a good, you know, fairly thick coverage of paint. You could do some that are like slightly thinner, 
but you don't want it to be so thin that it's going to wash itself out and not really show up. Now you can choose to push the tiles together firmly so that the paint like spreads around and does weird things. Or, you know, you can leave it more solid. Like I'll give you an example of one where I pushed it because you'll see more white space. Let's see, I'm trying to find one of my tiles. <clears throat> okay. For instance, I hope you could see this. But you could see a lot more clear space in there because I pushed, I smushed the tiles. When you don't smush the tiles, you get a more, well, that's not a good one. You get a more colorful, less clear. So they're both cool effects. So you have to choose what you like. I do a combo of both. I definitely do a combo of both. I'm going to rinse off my brush, dry it a little bit. I'm going to use some of this metallic brownie kind of color. I might put that across the whole thing. And then take a little black and put dots of black. And just do that. And that's it. It's fun. It is fun. Take some of this green. Take some of this gold and just put a couple globs of it on. I'll add a little silver in there. So that's what we're doing. We are just going to paint our little hearts out. I'm going to do like a red and black and silver one. Always. Wrong time. <laughs> doesn't matter what side you put together. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter, you know, any of that. It just don't matter just matters that you get some paint on and you put them together. Doesn't matter. Anything else. Now we'll use some purples and some pinks. Add in that some silver. Stick it together. If you have a lot of paint on the tile and you push it together, it's going to, one color is generally going to take over and push the other colors aside. So if you're going to smush them together, don't use quite as much paint. Um, back off on the paint just a little bit if you're going to push them together to get that effect. Otherwise, one color is just going to absolutely take over and it won't look as nice. I've noticed that. Like this, I have a lot of paint on there, so I'm not going to really smush. I'm just going to tap it a little bit so that they blend like that. And that's it. Because otherwise, it, that silver in the middle is going to take over. You know what I mean? And that wouldn't be as nice. Oh, also, um, don't bother in the comments saying, oh, why don't you put some glitter in there? I've done that. Glitter does nothing. It just turns into more bubbles. Like, there's a couple of them that I tried to sprinkle glitter in, and the glitter just melts, and it makes, it actually makes the, the it just makes it worse, actually, because you get more bubbles and less color, because something happens to the glitter. I guess it melts. I don't know. But it doesn't look as nice as you'd think it would. So there's that, yeah. <laughs> so don't bother with glitter. It's
experiment. I'm sure there are things, like I thought about, um, putting like little pieces of paper in it. So that's an idea. Make You can make them big enough and put graphics. Like if you made them this big, you could probably put a little graphic and, you know, glue down some graphic in the middle of it. I'm sure there are other things you can do. I put out way too much paint. I put out enough paint for like 50 tiles, but that's okay because I'll put it in my paint book. I'm going to paint the rest of these and come back because there's only like five, so I'll be right back. Okay, so we are painted. And I'll show you. There they are. In a minute, I'm going to put these in the oven. But right now, I'm going to take a brush and grab my paint book and go to town putting this paint in here. Well, my dumbass camera stopped when I was putting the paint in the paint book because it ran out of memory, so I had to go clean it off. But the tiles are painted, um, and now we have to wait till they dry. So um, they don't have to dry like 100%, but I figure, you know, give them about an hour because they're stuck between two pieces of plastic. It might take a little longer than 10, 15 minutes that it would take if it was an open air so I give it about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, and then we'll come back and I'm actually gonna take you to my oven and show you the process of baking them. So you could see, you know, exactly what happens and what you do. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Bye. Okay, don't mind my disgusting oven. Seriously, it's gross. Um, you're gonna put a piece of foil on the rack like that. And after it's heated and we go to put the tiles on, I just want to say this before, I, before it's hot. You see how the rack has like little dips because of this? Put your tiles in these so that you're not putting them on top of here so that they melt and might, you know what I mean? Put them on the flatter part, like in here. Just put them, you know, like a half inch apart in these. So I'm going to preheat the oven. And I have it so I'm just going to turn it all the way up to broil. And obviously it's heating up and I'm going to give it a five minutes to heat up and then we'll put the tiles in the oven. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I got them on there as you could see. They're on there. Obviously it's heated up because it's like orange. So I'm going to put them in. And I'm going to set my timer for like three minutes. Whoops, I stopped my video. <laughs> um... I'm going to set the timer for like, I don't know, like three minutes. But really, I'm going to keep an eye on them. I'm going to try to do this with one hand. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to set it for like three minutes. But really, I'm going to keep an eye on them because, see, the first time I did it, that lady that I did, that I got it from the video said 10 minutes. But that was clearly too long. Um, so you just want to do it until they don't look like two tiles anymore. You want it so that they kind of look like one smooth tile. So as soon as they get to the point where they look like one smooth tile, just take them out. You don't have to, you know, you'll kind of know because they won't look like two tiles put mushed together anymore. They'll look like one, you know, tile. So that's all you really want to look for. You don't want them to be in there so long that they, you know, start to bubble tremendously, you know. So I will come back and after a minute or two and we'll check on them so I'll be right back okay I'm gonna check on them I don't want my camera too close to the heat but I don't know if you could see let's see if we could zoom in they're not quite done yet but almost they're very close so I am going to give it just another minute or two so I'll be back Okay, I only waited like a little, like a half a minute or about a minute. 
and it's hard to see because this thing won't focus there we go but they're done this lighting is really bad right here so let me get them off of here um, you can just about pick them off with your hands um, if you, like you know if you put it make sure you put them on the dull side of the foil too because it'll be easier I just go through the foil doesn't ever get hot so this is right out of the oven and you could literally touch foil it does not get that hot um, even on under a broil the tiles are going to be hotter than the foil so I'm just picking them off and so that they're not sticking anymore because that's all you need to do is just pick them a little bit um, so they're not sticking and then once you do that and move them a little bit you can just leave them sit at that point and cool because some of them are obviously shaped funny because they were like that to begin with I just used them anyway because I didn't care Okay, so now all of them are not sticking anymore. So I'm going to let these cool and bring them back in the craft room, and then we can look at them. So I'll be right back. So, okay, here are our tiles. Aren't they gorgeous? I think some of them just came out really cool looking. Like, they've got, like, different colors, variations, and, like, they just look so cool. Well, here they are. You can kind of look at them there. Hopefully you could see them. But I think they came out awesome. I would suggest between six and nine minutes, depending on your oven and depending on how big you make them. Um, they probably these probably there's a couple of them that probably could have used to melt a little longer, but this one came out really cool. That one's cool. So anyway, yeah. So this is an awesome technique. It's a lot of fun. And now I've got bunches of these tiles because I've made, you know. A whole bunch of them and she gave me some and now I've got a collection of tiles plus the ones that she gave me in here so I've got different sizes and colors and yeah so this is just a lot of fun and I love them so thanks for watching and I hope you guys give this a try and if you do make sure you're careful using an oven obviously if you're underage make sure you get your parents permission and they help you don't do this you know with you know without some sort of supervision if you're under 18 please um but yeah if you liked my video please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe this way you can get other videos that i have um in your email and be the first to see what videos come out and leave me a comment down below and let me know if you think you're going to make some of these and if you've ever made them or anything like it um I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to everybody. Love you guys. Bye.